Well, we've got Congressman Ron Paul for the next 20 minutes, and I know he's the hardest working person in Congress. And uh, I feel a little guilty taking his time up, but uh, he's got so much important information. And I know our audience is always chomping at the bit whenever he uh, joins us normally every month, but now every couple of months because he's so busy. And I've got a whole cornucopia of things to cover here. The wars, the constitutional crisis, the TSA, the dirty tricks the media has been running on Ron Paul. And he's a, he's a good sportsman, so he never really talks about it, but I think it needs to be uh, discussed. But obviously, he's a presidential candidate. He's the only candidate that is a constitutionalist and that has the solutions to help get this country on the right track. All the others are rhinos or globalists or neocons, and we've got to get behind Ron Paul. But thank God he ran for president because by running, he's injecting real issues. We've got him for the next 20 minutes, and then he's gone. Uh, sir, there's so much to cover, but the Financial Times says the dollar is seen losing global reserve status. The bankers are engaged in economic terrorism in Greece. Uh, now they're saying it's going to spread here. Uh, the recession never ended. Uh, you've been proven right again, sir. What can you say, because you're on the banking committees, what can you say about the state of the world economy right now? Well, I think it's sick and getting thicker. I did read one article you probably saw today. They said that the dollar, the reserve standard, as the reserve standard of the world, will be coming to an end, and they added within 25 years, I would uh, suggest that uh, it's going to come much sooner. I just don't believe it'll last for 25 years where it'll be the dominant reserve currency of the world. The big problem, though, is uh, who's going to pick up the pieces? They're getting together and they're trying to have another international paper currency put together, but then they throw out a few tidbits and say, well, maybe we ought to put a little bit of, of gold into that as well. But uh, the, the, um, the problems we have are, are really very overwhelming. They cannot sustain this. So I would say that it's not going to be 25 years, but I don't know, you know, nobody knows exactly the date. But it could come sooner, a lot sooner. It could come a year or two or who knows when. depends on what event might arise. But these, the, the problem they face is the one that we face in trying to figure it out is the dollar is ter a terrible currency. But when you compare it to the euro that has to bail out the Greek economy, you know, all of a sudden people, people look to us because traditionally we've been so strong economically and militarily. They say, well, at least we can park our money in treasury bills, you know, for another month or two or three. But someday they're going to run out of this in the momentum we against the dollar. And uh, not too many years ago, the dollar got in big trouble, and we had to go beg into the IMF, and that was in 79 and 80. Uh, people thought it would be they'd lose control, but uh, the time is coming, and that will be a much bigger event than we've just experienced. You know, uh, from '08 up until now, and the, the current crisis that we're in the middle of, because I think it'll just drive us that much deeper into a economic crisis. Well, the Chinese, as you know, just two weeks ago said the United States is already technically defaulted. The Federal Reserve is buying most of the T bills. And for the average layman out there, they're like, why does that concern me? Well, that's the faith and credit of the United States. And, and that's a tactic I've seen where they'll say 10 years, 25, on something that's going to happen to introduce the idea to you so you accept it but don't panic. A lot of the experts I read and uh, who've been accurate in the past, they say two, three years. But then they point out it's a global concerted devaluation. So it's not even that the dollar is going to lose its reserve. It's just going to lose its value. That's right. And... You know, they, they, they're trying to frighten the members of Congress into, you know, voting to raise the debt limit like they did about the bailout. You know, the end of the world will come. Uh, there will be a default. But the default is, I mean, our country is known for default. I mean, all the way back to the Civil War period, they defaulted on, on promising to pay gold. We did it in the 30s with Roosevelt. Then we did it to all foreigners in 1971. We just say, well, no, yes, we promised you uh, an ounce of gold for $35, but we're not going to do it anymore. So and even now, they, they keep saying, well, you have to raise it because we don't want to default on the debt. But if prices are going up for the average person, which they are, and they're probably going up uh, 5 to 10 percent at least at the minimum, uh, somebody's defaulting constantly. That means they're losing 10 cents on the, on the dollar every year, and it'll get much worse. So that is the default, but that's the deception. Matter of fact, it's deliberate policy because they know what we know. They know that debt can't be paid. There's no way they can meet their this. There's not enough people working to pay off the debt. But the private central banks, they get first use 
on the money. And so they're more than happy. And as we get more bankrupt, they're going to be there loaning us whatever the new currency system is in the future. So they come out on top with their new vaunted bank of the world that George Soros says is going to save us. Yeah, and they, and they pay 0% interest on it, and then they buy some of this government debt and do these kind of things, and, and they make 2 3 4%. But, you know, if you're retired and, and think you have this obligation to take care of yourself and say, well, I'm going to have a CD because I can't trust, the, you know, the stocks or anything else, they get cheated because they make essentially nothing on their, on their savings, and then they have to pay taxes on it. Then they wonder why the people don't take better care of themselves, you know. But it's a deeply flawed system. It's a deeply flawed system of money and the welfareism and central economic planning through the Federal Reserve. It's all deeply flawed, and uh, though many of us have talked about this for many, many years, uh, it's coming to fruition, and most people are realizing it. It's also the reason that especially the young people are realizing how much they're being dumped on, and I know you reach a lot of young people as well, talking to how they're getting ripped off. Uh, because uh, there's not and there's no way. Even if they could get a good job, they can't pay off these obligations. But they're not getting any good jobs. So we are really, really facing a major problem, and it has to be a dollar Absolutely. crisis coming in our in our future. Well, what about Bernanke last week saying he's puzzled that the economy isn't getting better? You, with total precision, have predicted exactly what would happen because it's sound laws of economics. Uh, Bernanke knows full well, as you just said. They know what they're doing and, and, and telling us we're not in a recession. I mean, that's another lie. Congressman, uh, shifting gears into the campaign, uh, you are the only candidate you know, d decades ago telling the truth about issues. Now in the presidential race, the only one uh, who's telling the truth and who has the track record to be trusted, Mitt Romney, uh, you know, who helped write what became Obamacare, uh, the rest of them. I mean, this is a, a pack of people uh, who are, are just completely unqualified at this point. Uh, we've got uh, CNN uh, ignoring their own polls and running uh, Internet polls with 54 people and then showing you for zero when their own polls show that you won. You're winning most of the straw polls, second New Hampshire. I hear mainline conservative radio talking about Republican candidates. They won't even mention you, despite the fact that you're right there in the top three candidates. Uh, that shows that the system is scared of you. What can you say to the dirty tricks uh, that they've been uh, trying to pull on you? I don't think you could stop them. I mean, they're, they have too much power and control because they own the media and they own a lot of these outlets. So talking to people like you, it will get the truth out, but also the Internet is a good way to do this. But as bad as the system is, it still operates reasonably well. That is that, you know, over the years I've been able to run for Congress and get elected. And now I am still able to compete even up against these odds and, and these tricks. Because, you know, we can get in and organize, and our numbers are growing. We're able to raise the money that is necessary, and we continue to do that. As long as, as, long as we keep adding volunteers and able to raise the money, we are going to compete. But obviously it is more difficult because there's still a large number of people, if not even the majority, get their information from the evening news, the ordinary news, and from their politicians. And if, uh, if they can discredit you, you don't get credibility. And last go around... You know, the first two major debates, one right before uh, Iowa and one before New Hampshire, you know, they excluded me from the debates. This year, they're not going to be able to do it. So that we, we have made progress, and that's been because there's a growing number of people who are on to their tricks and are watching them rather closely, and they're going to hear from, from the supporters if they start doing that. So uh, in spite of the obstacles, our job is to keep doing what we're doing and, and just gain supporters. Well, I want to talk about some of the things on the positive front and, and specifically the websites and how people need to get involved now. But you, at the start of the race last time, weren't even in the top ten. Then you were in the top four or five. Now, out of the gates, you're winning most of the straw polls. You've won the big coveted CPAC two years in a row. So Fox cuts to a year-old clip of you being booed. Uh, I mean, all sorts of tricks. I mean, it is, it is showing that they're scared of you, showing you are viable. Uh, the, the new talking point is you're not viable and you're fighting for credibility, uh, which, again, is just a pure hoax 
if you just look at the polls and the numbers, they are horrified of you. And we have Jim Tucker and others that have given us sterling intel from inside Bilderberg the last five years running. You are discussed every year. And they say even if Ron Paul doesn't win, it's it's the third rail in colleges now, not liberalism or fake conservatism, uh, but, you know, true freedom. Um, uh, you're in the debates. You're exposing the imperial presidency. You're exposing the, the dollar devaluation. I mean, they... They are like vampires to a, a cross, and Ron Paul is the cross. They, they are scared of you. Well, uh, I don't know how scared they are. I think they do have concern. But, uh, you know, the one place where we uh, think they're revealing that we, we our side, is making progress is they're starting to support some of our positions, whether it's, you know, backing off on some of this warmongering stuff and uh, saying some things about auditing the Fed. So we're making that progress. And what they believe is that if they just appeal or neutralize that a little bit and they can get elected, one of them get elected that supports the same policies, they don't have to follow through with the policy. So they recognize our views are popular, but they also know that you can say a lot of things in campaign, and as long as we elect you know, their particular kind of people, they don't have to follow through on their, uh, their promises. Well, that was my next point. Uh, while they're attacking you and, 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 and you know, saying that you're weak when you're the opposite, it, they're all, even mainstream media admits that suddenly the entire Republican field is acting and talking like Ron Paul. So when they can't beat you, they, they try to counterfeit you. Yeah, and they, they certainly wouldn't say, well, you know, uh, he has a good point there or there, but uh, the the rude li laughing and the ridicule, uh, I, I think that's going to go away. So far it's gone away, and I don't know whether they'll go back to that or not. So th there's reason for us to say there's a good reason to keep doing exactly what we're doing and using what is available to us, uh, you know, which radio shows and which uh, Internet programs and there's, there's just a lot available to us. It's not like when there were just three major networks and hardly anybody on talk radio that would, you know, defend our position. So, so that's where, you know, I'm optimistic. But on the short run, there are days when I think about the overwhelming problems we face. And, you know, we're just starting to see what happens when the government can't come through, you know, like in places like Greece where the promises can't be fulfilled. People get angry. That'll be, that's going to be happening here, too. Well, you, there's a good chance you're going to become president, but regardless, we've got to supercharge your campaign so you can be at the you know, very forefront the entire time injecting real issues so that as the implosion comes in the future, people will know what you said and our movement for liberty with you as a focal point will be that much bigger and stronger to offer real solutions and we'll end up having a president uh, poll one way or the other. So folks need to have a long-term vision. Do you agree with that? Absolutely. We have to have a long-term uh, plan because nothing happens overnight. And uh, uh, if you had asked me five years ago how far along we would be uh, in this effort, I would have not been very optimistic that we could have achieved what we have so far. So think, things are moving, but we, it, it means that we still have a long way to go, too. And there's lots up for grabs. And, and when people lose power, they can get pretty, pretty nasty because they do not want to give up that power. And the people who control the money and the system and the appropriations process and the international affairs and, and all these things, they will not go away quietly. Uh, they will be, uh, you know, pr pretty determined to cling to their power. Kicking and screaming. All right, we've only got four or five minutes left running through these quick questions. Uh, I was surprised to see Congressman Nadler, big Democrat, come out and say Obama is becoming an emperor. Uh, just as you said weeks ago, the last nail in the republic's coffin, if Congress lets the president not even consult Congress and say, my authority comes from the U.N., quote, I've done this for the, for the legitimacy uh, of the U.N. I mean, is, sir, is that not seditious? Is that not treason? Is it not impeachable uh, what President Obama has done with this, with this whole Libya thing? Uh, and, and now they're getting the ground invasion ready? Oh, sure. And in a different age, uh, it would have been impeachable and it would have probably followed through. But up until recent years, they've either gotten permission or token permission. But it's, uh, it's been bad for a while. Truman certainly did not do anything to notify Congress. He just marched in under U.N., uh, you know, into Korea. 
and uh, they got token permission, you know, for Vietnam and these other events. But once again, uh, Bosnia, Bosnia was no permission, no consultation, and this is the same way in Libya. But, uh, you know, although the Congress is waking up and there's a pretty good coalition of, of, of uh, liberals and conservatives, Republicans and Democrats coming together and trying to slow this thing up and say the president has no right to do this, at the same time, on this DOD budget author, uh, authorization, you know, they inserted in there an expansion of the power. Actually, if, that's, if it's passed by the Senate and put in the law, we've literally, literally legalized, we put into the code, even though not at the Constitution, put into the code that the president doesn't have to come to us. They've expanded the definition of our enemy today. It's al-Qaeda, and they're allowed to do almost anything there. But they've expanded it to can include the Taliban and anything which is considered an associated force. The associated forces, the president has the right to go after no matter what country, or including our own. So this, to me, was one of the most dangerous changes in our our law. It was given legitimacy to our president uh, on what he's been doing. And, and, of course, there's not much resistance either from the Republicans or the Democrats on this, but... Uh, Hopefully we can wake the American people up to that change. What about Obama admittedly uh, going to have feds pose as people calling doctors to see if they're taking Medicare, Medicaid patients, which is their right to not do, as you know. Uh, this is really freaking doctors out that now the feds are going to be spying, spying on them. Yes, and uh, I, w I would assume uh, that uh, most of people don't realize that's against the law to do those kind of things. I mean, why, why should they violate the privacy, you know, of a doctor-patient relationship and come in and fake? It's fraud. It's deceitful. It, and what kind of punishment might these doctors, what if the doctors say, I don't take medical care patients, you know? Uh, who knows what kind of a list you get put on there? But, uh, no, that's just uh, one thing leads to the next, always an unintended consequence. Everything, every time the government does one thing, they create two or three new problems. Congressman, just a couple questions left here, and then we're going to ask you how we support the campaign again. Uh, Operation Fast and Furious, just to remind listeners, the head of the ATF caught lying to Congress saying he didn't know. Now we have the emails and memorandum. They were running the operation to ship guns into Mexico to then claim that we're causing the violence down there, a form of false flag, a, a staged event to frame the Second Amendment. The, he's caught lying. Um, can you or others call for congressional hearings and haul these people up and uh, I mean, expose what the uh, dreaded ATF has done? Oh, I'm sure uh, that would be legitimate if somebody's so motivated. I don't happen to be on that particular committee. But, uh, yes, government oversight could do that. They could call up and get to the bottom of it. But uh, I haven't heard a whole lot talk. I don't have any special information on that. But they certainly can, and they certainly should. Yeah. In closing on the political issues, uh, there's new reports out in mainstream television and newspapers that cancer is surging uh, in body scan uh, operators, the TSA at the Boston airport where it's been for seven years, and they've had an internal cover-up uh, of the fact that they know that radiation is leaking out of these. Uh, could this be the nail in the coffin of this, this federal TSA that they knowingly uh, are not following radiation rules or radiology rules that you'd follow well, it in, in your practice? And that well, this th hope so, but isn't it sad that they have to come to that conclusion after somebody's made sick or get... Uh, get cancer, and, but the big thing is, is we got to get the government out of that business. So if they get rid of the machines, then they're going to do a lot more probing and prodding and poking everybody. So it's it's really tragic. I think what's happening at airports is the is the litmus test. If the American people can sit back and look at some of those pictures and not be outraged and not demanding changes, I, I those that when I see that, that's when I have some pessimistic thoughts about what's going to happen in this country. So this hope that uh, they will so, uh, those pictures will so outrage the people that uh, we'll, we'll end up doing something about it. Speaking of the TFSA, I've got sources inside the Perry campaign and at Fox News. As you know, Rick Perry, the governor, is planning to run. I would imagine you've got the same intel. And he's going to run on a Ron Paul platform. So he's really going to be the guy you uh, face from our uh, analysis. And Rick Perry quietly tried to kill the good bill. They've rewritten it. Uh, where it actually puts in the code that the TSA can do this now. 
uh, in Texas, and they're calling it an anti-TSA bill, kind of like what we saw with the War Powers uh, double speak of saying they're against what Obama's doing, but trying to give him the power. Right. Yeah. That's typical. You, that's why you can never look what they do on the surface. When they want, when, you, when people want something done, they'll pass a bill and it'll do the opposite. Whether it was the War Powers resolution or this recent episode of that bill they tried to pass, which literally legalized the war. So uh, yes, that's what they do, and then they claim victory. And What's your view uh, of Perry? What's your view of Perry? Well, I've never, I've never, I might have sh shaken hands with him, but I don't even remember that. So I've never, I don't know him well personally, but I would think that he and I wouldn't have much in, in agreement on policies. Well, he was Al Gore's former campaign manager in Texas. I don't think that's a very good... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> that, ought tell, that ought to tell a few people something. <laughs> <laughs> well, Congressman, you seemed really happy because you're always so focused because I know you're a very disciplined man. But when I talked to you in the break before you came live, I don't think I've ever heard you so happy. Uh, am I right in that? I mean, you said, well, I'm sad for the country, but overall, I'm happy that folks are starting to wake up. I mean, you are happy. Yeah, I, I am. And things have, uh, personally with family and everything have been has been going pretty well. And uh, that's what, uh, I guess, cheers me up. Well, thank you, sir. In closing, what, I mean, because I've got millions of listeners, a lot of new big stations across the country. Uh, we're not talking to just a million every day. We're talking to three million every day on the radio alone, not just Internet later. We're reaching about 10 million a week. Um, talking to the millions of new listeners who've never heard you in a long form. They've heard you on TV being interrupted constantly. Uh, what can they do to be part of this uh, second American revolution or the restoration of the republic? W give us the orders from headquarters. What do we do to, to, to supercharge a campaign that's already on fire? Well, uh, in, in very general terms, uh, slightly separate from the campaign, what everybody has to do is be informed, get the information and find out where the problem is and what the answers are and why philosophy is important. When they're informed, then they have to do something, and they can make choices. They can get involved directly. They can become candidates or support candidates. They can get into education. They can get radio talk shows. They can get on the Internet to promote this, this message. But then when it comes more specific uh, for what I've been doing, you know, we had the educational opportunities through my foundation as well as Campaign for Liberty, but right now we are very much engaged in the uh, presidential campaign. People who are interested in that can go to ronpaul2012.com and find out what they can do because uh, that's where we need the help. We need people uh, to volunteer. We need to raise money, and right now... The next big event for us is to try to find people in Iowa. If anybody knows anybody in Iowa that would be willing to support us and make an effort and come out on August 13th, that would be very helpful to us. And, and uh, when's the next money bomb? And folks can give right now at ronpaul2012.com. Well, there is an effort right now because on the 30th of this month, uh, the books close. And, you know, there's a, there's a big, that report is significant because it will be blasted all over the country on who raised what. And uh, we won't be the biggest fundraiser, but we're going to have raised a lot. But uh, they were trying to push for, uh, you know, first for three, then somebody said, well, maybe we can raise five. And I think it's uh, not quite at four million right now. So in the next couple of days, we're hoping to boost that up and have a good showing uh, for the uh, financial reports of this quarter. All right, Congressman. Well, thank you so much. Okay. We'll, we'll uh, talk to you again soon. Thank you Very so good. much. Thank you. All right, there goes, thank you. There goes Congressman Ron Paul, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, very, very exciting information and uh, great to have him uh, on the broadcast with us today.